The case has been brought into the lab and we've made our models, we've articulated them, we've used the Luxor bite, bites provided by the dentist, extremely accurate, cut down, trimmed, and trimmed and skimmed. So effectively what we've done, we have a really nice little bite wafer, which is very accurate. We've then mounted this up on our articulator. We've done our copings on the anterior section and we've already waxed up our posterior section as to the trial smile model, which is taken when the temperatures have been finalized. What we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna be using this putty to establish our incisal edge position. This is a rigid fast putty, which we like to use in the lab because it's extremely accurate and we've used a light body wash with this, with this case. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put the wax inside the putty and we're gonna connect the incisal edge to our substructure copings. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna finish adding some wax to the front and we're just gonna now reveal our incisal edge. So the putty is gently teased away from the wax so it doesn't destroy it or doesn't damage it in any way. And there we are, we've got a perfect incisal edge position, full contour, using the very accurate putty placed on the, it has palatal stop, so it has a three point contact on the arch. So now what we're gonna be doing, we're just gonna take the flash off. And the next stage is gonna be adding the mesio and distal line angles and build, building in the rest of the wax to give it the full contour shape that we're looking for. Then this will be checked on the articulator and then we're gonna do our cutback in the wax which will be allowed for our porcelain application. Basically what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fill in the meso and distal line angles. So we're connecting our substructure wax up with our incisal edge addition and we're gonna be filling in all the margins. So we're now basically constructing full contour our, our anterior section, our two to two. So it's just a wax additive technique. It's very good, very accurate. It's always good to take your time on these things. Never rush them. The more accurate you are, the better fit you get. Works every time. The interesting part about this, this uh, system is it can't be wrong. Because if you have a putty of the patient approved temporary that the patient has said, I love this smile, and you have three point contact on that model, you've verified that your model's very accurate, you know that the putty is gonna be spot on, so as soon as those two go together, you can actually see from the inside where it just fits beautifully around the tissue and around the tooth stops. And then of course, you can measure between your incisal edge and your margin to verify with the dentist's notes, which are taken using digital calipers in the surgery and in the laboratory that they're exactly the same. And we're doing all this before we do our cutback. So we're just gonna carry on now, filling in these spaces and getting our contour right. Okay, so what we've done now is we wax the case up full contour. We use the putties to get the incised ledge position, which has been verified using a patient approved model. We've checked it on the articulator for excursions and we've checked our occlusion. We're really happy with all of this. So what we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna be using the cut down putty again. And we're gonna be placing it on the model and now we're gonna do our reduction for our incisal build up and our porcelain application. This is a technique basically where you have a 60 or 70% substructure which gives you the strength of the material. Talking of the material, in this case we're gonna be using Emacs. It's extremely strong. We've got over 400 megapascals of bonded strength. It looks fantastic. And we're gonna be using an LT pellet. So we really are gonna get a fantastic looking job. The value of the LT is the same as dentine, so it's really nice for us. So effectively, you can do 70% of your crown. You can get all your excursions. You can get all the uh, points of contact and in wax, which is now in the strong material, and you can layer all your lovely porcelain over your substructures on the front. It looks fantastic. And in a commercial laboratory, it's really important to do this. It makes the way of producing the work quicker and easier. And that's where we need to be. We need to be able to make the, the, the patterns and the, uh, the wax ups straightforward and a predictable result every time. So we're just finishing off the incisal cutback now. And we're gonna be verifying that with the putty for the final time any moment now. 
we just need to make sure that we've got enough room for the ceram porcelain which we're going to be layering over the whole labial surface of these and there it looks fantastic so about half 0 0.5 it can be anything up to 0 0.5 up to up to a millimeter and that's really good so now we've verified our occlusion we know our fit's really good our protrusive is good our left and right lateral is good so now what we're going to be doing we're going to be splicing through the wax ups so effectively now, we're just going to be cutting through and preparing the margins for the individual uh, investing for the pressing process. So we're going to take the model apart and we're going to now start sectioning through with a blade. Each unit is treated this way really really precision around the margins really important that you get the profile correct you can wax, you can wax up on uh, uh, solid models which is a very good way because you can uh, you can sort out your soft tissue if you have areas of soft tissue that you need to really wax into you can always cut them back you can seal them and then you can wax onto them or of course you can use a soft tissue model sometimes it gets a little bouncy but if you contour it first or use the rigid, then that's fine. So now we're going to do this with every die, and then they're going to be individually sprued, ready for pressing. Effectively what we're doing, these are channels that the Emax lithium disilica is going to travel down. So it comes as a pellet form, and it will be pressed inside a furnace, so it turns the pellet into actually our finished substructures. So what we're doing now is we're cementing, we're just melting the wax around the sprue, onto the casting there. Now we're coming to the part where we're actually placing the waxed unit on the sprue onto the former. It's really important that all the sprued wax units are nicely evenly spaced, not too close together. Keep the angle nice and shallow, not too steep. Keep the sprues short. As you can see, it looks quite neat. Again, these are just the channels now that the um, press material, Emacs in this situation, is going to flow down and actually press our, our final job. So that's it already now for our pressing procedure.